Hi there, and welcome to another interview. Today, I've got the fabulous Tim with me, with his partner, Francie. And it's always nice to have the couple, the people that you first meet on your first call. And it happens ever such a lot in this particular area, because uh, when you have something wrong with you, your partner is your rock, your support, you see. And this is why we're going to have two people on the screen. But the main person we're going to be talking to is Tim, but Francie will definitely chime in. So here we go. I'm going to ask the question that I ask absolutely everybody. Hey, Tim, why did you become Carnival? Well, um, to make a short story long, um, <laughs> uh, I went to Carnival because I just I needed a change and I needed to do something different with my eating habits. I had, an, well, come to find out, an extremely unhealthy relationship with food. And so... Um, we just, we needed to do something different. I had a lot of health challenges and, um, we just looked into different diets. And the thing was, I was getting so frustrated with like, okay, well, do, do I need to change to like a whole food plant-based diet, kind of like a hybrid carnivore plant-based food diet and, or just like keto, paleo, like. There's was so much information out there. And of course, with the internet, you get inundated with information. And so with that, though, I was getting extremely frustrated because I knew I needed to do something different because of all the health challenges that I had. And I just felt like, you know, diet was going to be the, the core foundation of it. And um, I was just getting frustrated. Francie, Francie saw my frustration. You know, because I I wanted to do something different. I wanted to become more disciplined with my eating. But um, from my doctors to my nephrologist to like, you know, well, you need some carbs and you need some more, but you need more protein and uh, like just inundated with information. And I just felt so defeated because everywhere I looked, everywhere I... I, everything I read about, it was, hey, try carnivore or hey, try keto or because keto is the way to go and or whole food, plant-based diet. That's the way to go. That's, you know, 100% go do this. And I saw so much contradicting information from uh, comments and videos that I saw on YouTube and I was just getting just defeated really. And then Francie um, introduced me to Coach. Um, and she said, hey, you need to check out this video. And she sent me the video. And you were actually interviewing Steve, I believe. No. Um, and he started talking about how, like, oh, well, I am sirloin. And, just, and I had heard about carnivore before. Um, and I was like, uh, but, you know, you hear these things. And you think, well, it's just a fad. It's just, you know, oh, it's a, the the latest craze. And um, but Franti was like, hey, uh, he actually coach actually offers a consultation. So, I mean, and I'm like, see, it's just about the money. Like, it's just a video, and he's just trying to get your money. And she's like, well, look, it's, I mean, what's it gonna hurt? You, you've already done the research. You've tried these different things. And uh, I think a coach would be really good for you. So I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll give it a try. You know, let, let's go ahead and do it. And so we set up the initial consultation, or rather, Francie set up the initial consultation. And um, I was uh, very skeptical because... I'm naturally that way. I'm I'm a very critical person. I critique everything. I'm very analytical. And um and so I went into it with somewhat of an open mind, you know. Um, but uh I was like I I'm here to get information, you know. And but it was just amazing because like coach, you you answered all my questions and it was just it was a breath of fresh air for me because you were just genuinely just empathetic and encouraging and you were factual like okay this guy knows his stuff and and the things that you were sharing with me 
And like you put, you put to bed a lot of the reservations that I had about going into this diet. And really that was just the biggest plus for, for us is because you brought clarity to something that was just so confusing with all the information out there. And really it was just the kind, genuine, empathetic and compassionate way in which you presented everything. And uh, I really, I was telling Francie, like, I felt like he saw me and not just an opportunity to get someone, you know, to pay money or do this or buy into this or program or something that, like, I just felt like you saw me. And that spoke volumes to me. And so I started, uh, I felt so encouraged after our initial our consultation and, um, yeah, so we started doing the carnivore diet, and man, it's it's been a ride since. That's brilliant, thank you. And I got a bit choked up then. Sorry. Um, so you came to me with stage five kidney disease, and I have to make that clear because looking at you, you're a picture of health. Uh, <laughs> peritoneal dialysis, um, and on the transplant list, and Francie was very um, bothered about doing the right thing you were very bothered about doing the right thing and like you say we went through a protocol and can you remember what you told me after our first well, when we did our first sort of follow-up how you were feeling the weight you lost and all this sort of stuff oh man um so our first follow-up um happened about a week after the initial consultation call right so i um uh jumped on board a couple days before our initial consultation so i had cheated as far as starting the diet <laughs> and uh but i started seeing an immediate difference so like from the point of consultation to our first initial meeting um was about uh well yeah seven days eight days and just within those eight days of just uh, I had achieved, you know, um, fasting for 24 hours. Um, and I was like extremely surprised at how hungry I really wasn't. Um, cause I started, my, my go-to has always been like beef patties. Like it, I say always, I've only been doing this for about a month, but, um, my go-to has been hamburger patties. Um, and so, but I really enjoy just a good, just a good hamburger. Um, and I started eating just like once a day and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, in fact, I actually like had a message coach and message you because of the weight loss happening as well. And I was concerned. I was like, Hey, I'm, I'm losing a lot of weight here. And you know, I'm, I'm really concerned. And, um, but you were on point. You said, well, it's probably just water weight. And, um, but, uh, my energy levels were up and, um, the, the thing that was just noticeable, um, by other people, people around me, um, at work, they were like, man, what is, what are you doing differently? Because you just look healthier. Now, mind you, um, part of what the driver of, making this change was um i had gotten very sick at the beginning of july and i was um uh had like a really bad head cold in fact i had a cyanitis laryngitis um pneumonia and then my ears had clogged up and so that that had lasted for about four weeks and I was just miserable. And Francie was actually, during that time, she was actually away on a missions trip in Uganda. And so I'm like, from for, well, a little over two weeks. So um, in, into July. So, um, which so, was not easy being away while yeah. knowing that he was this sick. And mm -hmm. I felt very powerless. And that was where, when I came back, I'm like, we have to make a change. Yeah. I, wasn't able to be there to help you and yeah, yeah so so um yeah so i'm like okay I, i'm feeling like just like a turd <laughs> and i've got to do something different and so we um uh i started uh 
d- eating, you know, uh, my, changing my eating habits. And a couple of days before the consultation, so we had the initial consultation, felt so empowered, so encouraged after that initial consultation. And then we did our follow-up visit and I could not believe like just my, my mood was elevated. My energy was elevated. Um, people at work noticed that that it's just a difference. They're like, wow, you look, you just, your color in, in your, your face just has come back and your eyes don't look so sunken and, and puffy. Like there's something different and like, yeah, I, I feel different. And um so yeah th- that was the biggest noticeable thing it's just people uh around me just commenting on how i just looked yeah tim now one of the things i love about you and france is when i first met you you were very clearly skeptical and you asked a lot of questions and i'm going to say this to other coaches out there for people asking questions they are interested it doesn't mean they're trying to catch you out um but you are underselling how bad you were because uh, you know, you were told you're going blind. You'd need inf- injections for the rest of your life. Your EGFR was allegedly less than 15. You're now on uh, dialysis, and uh, you're doing that at home. So, could you just tell us a, a little bit about, um, for instance, is it easier to sleep now because the dialysis for people that don't know peritoneal dialysis, you do at home and do it while you sleep. Has there been changes in that? Um, it, it has been easier to sleep. So, um, to kind of touch on the, the, the history. So I was actually diagnosed with diabetes when I was, uh, 16. And so, um, and I remember that initial uh, meeting with the doctor, um, because he, you know, they sit you down and they say, okay, well, first let's go over medical history or family history, you know? And so who in your family, you know, has diabetes, if anyone, and I was like, well, which side? And he goes, oh, okay, well, you know. And so I started explaining the medical history. You know, my mom had diabetes. Her mom had diabetes. Um, on my dad's side, his his mom had diabetes. My uncle, my dad's brother, has diabetes. So it was kind of like all around, you know, on top of <laughs> not having the greatest uh, eating habits, you know, coming from a Hispanic family, we're a, we're all about carbs. So, you know, you get us our beans, our rice, our tortillas, like, hey, we're good to go. That's a meal in and of itself. Um, and so we, um, so, so growing up in that, you know, and um, I told my parents like, hey, I'm just not feeling right. So they, they took me to the doctor and then that's when the doctor diagnosed me with um, diabetes. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is because I was 16, you know, which according to the doctors, you know, that's, oh, that's child onset diabetes, but I've never been diagnosed with child onset diabetes. They've always told me I was type two diabetes. Um, and so went immediately on insulin injections and then I had been on and off in insulin injections throughout my life. So I had, you know, gone off to, uh, left home when I was at 20, got off to Bible college and then I, you know, would sometimes take my injections, sometimes not, and what they call like the honeymoon phase of di- diabetes. And so I had always just kind of like struggled with it. And um, right about the time uh, uh, that I had met Francie, uh, well, uh, actually a short time before I met Francie, the doctor was saying like, hey, we might need to take... Um, a really good look at your kidney function. I paid no mind to that and, you know, just went about, went on about life. Well, fast forward to when we moved to Texas and I'm working three part-time jobs and I'm just feeling like really rugged and wore out. And I'm thinking, okay, it's because I'm working three part-time jobs, you know, and, and just trying to make things ends meet. And, um, but little did I know that my kidney function was decreasing and decreasing. And so, um, by a matter of divine providence, I went into, um, one of the, uh, one of the side jobs I had, I was trying to qualify for a trial, a medical trial, um, to where they just pay you for, you know, basically to be their guinea pigs. 
And so um, I went in for initial consultation and the nurse ran um, again the history and she's like, okay, what symptoms are you experiencing? And so I start telling her symptom after symptom after symptom, which is, you know, I'm well, I'm fatigued and my blood pressure is high and, you know, my, you know, bowels are irregular. And like, I just go down a, a litany of just lists <laughs> and she, she's like writing down all these symptoms and she says, okay, I'm pretty much gonna like tell you right up front, you're not going to qualify for this trial. Um, so I'm like, okay, so I'm starting picking up my things, getting ready to leave. She's like, well, hold on. We need to figure out what's wrong with you. And so, because I didn't have any insurance at the time. So I'm like, well, here we go. Like, I, I can't figure out what's going on here. So I might as well just leave. So she was, uh, kind enough to go ahead and just take my blood work, do tests, run tests and everything. Um, and she said, okay, well, the doctor's going to come, uh, get back to you. So um, about a week after that, the doctor calls me. I'm on my way to um, night school, and she says, "Okay, Mr. Hernandez, uh, yeah, yeah, this is him," and confirm the information and everything. And so she says, "Okay, um, what are you doing right now?" And I told her, "I was like, well, I'm I'm heading to night school," and she says, "Okay, I need you to stop, and I need you to go to the ER right now." Okay, like I. I can't do that. You know, what do you mean? I go to the ER and she said, your, your numbers are just off the chart here. Um, by all, all that I see, you're in stage five or stage four, if not in stage renal disease. And that just like floored me because I was very familiar with the term because my mom had actually passed away from complications due to kidney failure. And so I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And the image that I had in my mind uh, was, you know, uh, in in center treatment dialysis. And because that's what my mom went through. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? And so I was like, okay, doctor, thank you. I'm going to get a second opinion. <laughs> This, by the way, this was October of 2019. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so yeah, October two, 2019. And so I'm like, whoa, just floored. Well, um, again, through a, a matter of divine providence, my sister actually calls a nephrologist. Um, because I couldn't find one. I was frustrated because I'm like, I don't have insurance and no one's going to take me. No nephrologist is going to take South Bay kidney patients. So, well, here we go. Just push through. But there was no more pushing through. Like it was just, I, my body was shutting down. It was literally shutting down. And so my sister actually called, found someone that would accept. They're, they're like, don't even worry about, we'll figure out what to do, just get them in here. So we went and that began my journey on dialysis. So, um, I, uh, started at home PD or peritoneal dialysis. Um, and so that's just, they get your abdomen fitted with a catheter. And then, so I'm able to dialyze on a nightly basis, um, at home. So I was still able to work, you know, by the grace of God and, um, you know, and, and doing that treatment. Um, but, um, part of it, by that point, I had already dealt with many complications from diabetes, from neuropathy, um, to, you know, the itchy skin we talk about, um, to my retinal, uh, reattachment surgery, my retinals, uh, retinas had <laughs> detached. And so bleeding. So I pretty much was legally blind and being very foolish and still driving, just pushing through and driving and putting my life at risk and probably everyone else's. But so the year before he found out about this was when he had his um, eye surgery, mm -hmm. both eyes. And it was December, November, December, the year before mm -hmm. that he almost was completely blind. Yeah. That, so, yeah. So, but had retinal reattachment surgery, um, but just had been dealing with 
the complications from diabetes and kidney disease. And yeah. so we that was 2019. So 2020 on up to really just about a month ago, I had just dealing, been dealing with the frustration of like, okay, what works? What doesn't? Finding something that somewhat works and then getting tired of it because it's just like, <laughs> You just get frustrated. And so then, you know, enter coach <laughs> and we, we just like it, I just, I want to emphasize this to people that are like, that are like me, that ana analytical and even somewhat skeptical, like, don't be so hard on yourself. If you're skeptical, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of it can be somewhat misleading. And so having someone to walk with you in this journey, like coach. Um, and unfortunately, not everyone can have a Francie um, that is there to support you, you know, but you can find a community. And that's what I've found in doing this is just a community, you know, between coach, between Francie. And, and I know that there's groups out there, but like, don't be too hard on yourself if you are that analytical person, because you've just been given a lot of information and having to cipher through it all you know and i can't say and encourage it enough like having someone like coach to walk alongside you in this it's i mean the benefits are just off the roof because one thing is just accountability um but another thing is just like having a, a genuine empathetic person like coach i mean it's just it it's like you can breathe and, and just have a sigh of relief because someone is holding you accountable that has your or the, your best intentions at the forefront. Yes. Well, for instance, it it sound it's very overwhelming, like Tim was saying, um, with all the options and all the things that you're all of a sudden yeah. trying to change your entire life overnight and looking into getting lost in the Google, YouTube, everything. Yeah. Um, it's just nice to have someone that's doing the guesswork for you and eliminating that guesswork of like, cause we would try mm -hmm. eating really healthy and doing that. And then come to find out that the vegetables that he was eating was actually bad for him. <laughs> and we thought we were doing something that was benefiting him when it was actually worse mm -hmm. for him. So it's having that understanding of the whys that, coaches really helps hone in on yeah. and wow. yeah. so yeah yeah that's lovely a lovely thing to say and uh, you know I do appreciate it it brings a lump to my throat and um, you know one of the things I don't like about online coaching is I can't hug people or shake them by the hand you know and I'd love to come and meet you but um, yeah one of the things I've I've actually been telling people since we first met was uh, you know I ran the protocol past you and spoke about the 10 foods I think it'd be really good and they weren't all carnivore for people out there. It, it was, uh, you know, Tim's a chef. He wanted some other stuff. So I gave him those options. And then we went through the 10 things I would really avoid in this situation. And Fr Francie laughed and said, uh, that's pretty much what he's been eating. <laughs> so yes. it did sort of prove the point that these foods were in particularly not great. Um, and a lot of those were fruits and veggies. But anyway, right. Um for the eye thing we were just talking about, of course, you had a great thing the last time you went to the eye specialist. Yeah. So, um, all my follow up visits. Um, so about this point right now, it's been about four weeks on the carnivore diet. And so, but, uh, about two weeks ago, um, I had a bunch of like doctor visits and everything. So for those unfamiliar with, um, uh, dialysis protocol. So my clinic, uh, every two weeks I do, uh, blood work. And then two weeks after that, I usually meet with my nephrologist. Um, and then I've got, um, uh, because of the eye surgery, I've got, um, different visits and follow-ups as well. So, um, so the eye doctor visit, um, was amazing. Uh, I go into the doctor and, you know, they do their usual workup, you know, dial my, up my eyes, do a retinal scan. And then, um, uh, I go and sit in the chair and wait for the doctor. So 
he comes in and takes a look. He's got this little magnifying glass and he looks at each of my retinas and he's like, man, uh, looks great. And mind you, it had been about a year since I had seen them last. And so, uh, I would get injections just about every six months to a year apart, depending on how, uh, my eyes were. Um, and because of, um, inflammation in the back of the eye and, uh, so he looks and he's like, oh, great. And he looks over to his aide and he says, okay, so when was the last time he was in? And it's been a year, doctor. And he's like, wow, really a year? Um, okay, well, let's make it another year. And I'm like, okay, no, no injections. He's like, no, you don't need any injections. So I was like, this is awesome. So, uh, yeah, so I would be getting an injection. Um, so like literally a needle in my eye every uh while it started every three months and then it went on to six months and six months was a, pretty much about the regular and so i thought for sure i was gonna need uh an injection because it had actually been uh 12 months and been a year and i was shocked when he said like no everything looks good um i love you know what's going on and uh, hey whatever you're doing keep doing so i was like okay cool um so yeah and honestly like blood pressure plays a great role in that and so and that's one of the things that has been affected by the diet is just my blood pressure is starting to normalize now i've even got i, I really just i've gained a more sensitivity to my blood pressure medication um and actually right right before i started the diet my nephrologist said um prescribed uh about four more blood pressure medications so because my blood pressure just would not come down part of it was a medication from when i had gotten sick um you know in july but still like even before then like they they were concerned like man you just you're not normalizing your blood pressure like we've got to do something about it so she had just just before the diet prescribed four additional medications. And I have not had to take any of those additional medications. In fact, um, one of the things um, uh, is uh, amlodipine that I take along with um, another blood pressure medication, but I've actually had to kind of wean off the amlodipine because it's been dropping so much. Um, and so I've gotten a, a greater sensitivity to my blood pressure medication. Um, as far as the diabetes goes, that's an awesome story as well, because the diet has really controlled the blood sugar levels. Um, like doc or, or like coach said, um, I would eat, um, that was surprised to, to see that I could actually eat some fruit, you know, and, you know, just with the carnivore diet. And so I've been enjoying that. And so just focusing on those 10 foods that, hey, are really good for you, I can eat. And I've noticed that, well, wait a minute, like, I'm not hitting these blood sugar spikes. Like, what's going on? And I've actually had to wean off of Genuvia um, because of the drops. Like, I've had a lot of low blood sugar events. And um, I've... I've had, I haven't been able to do that for a long time confidently. I've gone off of diabetic medication just because I'm tired of this. I don't want to do this anymore. And it was detrimental to me. Like my blood sugar levels would just spike. But now like with the diet um, and, and with what I'm eating and, and the disciplines, I'm actually seeing a lot more low uh, blood sugar events so much so but i'm actually having to wean off of the genuvia so yeah it's it's amazing yeah tim and it's just shining through the screen and i can remember when i first met you um <laughs> you, you are a different person without a shadow of a doubt and, and uh it, it's amazing i just want to mention one last thing because when people do this way of eating yes we've talked about some amazing things there but also there's some low level things for instance you had some nodes some things that you're in your lower back you mentioned and the doctor said you're going to have those forever what happened there 
Um, well, with, with the weight loss, um, you know, uh, I'm half the man I used to be. So, <laughs> um, I'm actually, so right about the time that I started the diet, I was weighing in right around 200, you know? So for those unfamiliar with the peritoneal dialysis, you've got about 2.2, um, uh, getting gross. Yeah. Uh, fluid. Um, so I've got a last fill. And so with that, I would always kind of hover around 200. And so, but like in a matter of three weeks, so in total now, I'm holding steady at one, uh, like 168. So, so in total, I've, I've lost, you know, basically 25 pounds. Um, oh, actually 30, close to 30 pounds. And so in less than a month, in less than a month. Yeah. And so that was the thing that was shocking. You know, like I said earlier, uh, you know, I actually messaged coach and was just like, is this normal? Like I'm freaking out here, you know, because the weight was just dropping, you know, and I'm like, I'm not that hungry. And, you know, and it's just like, ah, and, um, but it was awesome, man. And so I start dropping the weight and, um, I start noticing just different things. The um, one thing I noticed is that I had like in my lower back these nodes. And when I was in my 20s, I went to a doctor about it and he's like, well, you've just got tumors. And I was like, wait, what? I've got tumors. And he's like, well, you know, we, we call them that. It's not like the cancer tumor. You just got fat nodes in the, in your back and just, and so they've always just been there. You know, and they're about, you know, some about this size, you know, about the size of my fist and in and, and my back. And I just woke up one day and I was telling Francie, I was like, wait a minute. Like those nodes used to be so big, like some of them are completely gone or just have grown uh, or decreased in size so much that they're about like the size of, I want to say some like a peanut or some like a walnut. And I was like, oh my gosh. And like, it's really helped my back out. My back is not as stiff as it used to be. Um, and stiffness, inflammation. Um, well, I was noticing like just before I started the diet in the mornings, I would be, I would start waking up and I'd have to like do this exercise with my hands because they're so stiff, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm over 45 now. It's just, it, this is just life you know and i'm just getting older and i was this is what it is and but i noticed one morning i was telling francie i just woke up and stretched and i was like look 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 you know it's like what you know and i'm like this is amazing like i'm not the no stiffness like it's i'm not like uh, effort trying to you know move my hands like it was like with ease right in the morning, first thing in the morning. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And so. And that was within the first like week. Yeah. First week. Yeah. Yeah. And amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> well, Tim, I'm so glad and Francie said, so glad that you agreed to do an interview so early on in your journey. Um, and it is one of those things that, if people are watching, it's not always a, as miraculous as as this, but it but it is miraculous for more often than more often than not. And uh, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you, Tim and Francie. I, I just want to thank you for doing it, and um, you know, hopefully we can come back in maybe six months or something and revisit this. I know we've got some coaching sessions coming up, but maybe do a, a sort of more public thing again in about six months if you'd be interested in doing that. Absolutely, absolutely, coach. Okay. So anyway, I just want to thank you again and I hope everyone at home enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much.